presentation mode. Okay, and so you'll be able to see it <coughs> up here, and then you'll be able to see the next slide as well. Okay. 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 <coughs> okay. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, our group we did our project on smart grid energy storage, um, and so just to, we wanted to give you like an overview. Um, of it and be able to just kind of explain everything that was going on. So uh, we had this nuclear uh, reactor with a small base load of a hundred, and then which is uh, which we modeled and simulated right here. And uh, what makes it really hard is so like when you, you were trying to meet two different demands, trying to meet heat and electric demand, and as you can imagine, they uh, they kind of switch over a 24-hour period. Uh, during the day you have a much higher electric demand, during the night you have a much higher heat demand. And so um, as we're changing this nuclear base load, um, it's, it, there's, a, there's a large time delay, about a three hour time delay on it. And so it's very slow to respond to that difference, like that demand that when it comes. And so in order to change it um, and keep it so that it's not really idling very much, um, when you have your base loads that idle, they become very, uh, uh, it, it damages them. And so um, we were trying to, uh, to maximize this uh, while still being able to meet the, the heat demands and then minimize um, that demand difference, uh, especially for electricity. And so we, we painted two different scenarios. We illustrated kind of both of them on here as an overview. Um, with our first scenario, we had a, a storage system, just an electric storage system, um, because uh, this, as, as we're building up all this heat, we're releasing a lot of electricity, we're going to store it up. Um, we have this disturbance variable here for, like, the, for the wind that we're trying to incorporate into the grid. And, and so what we did is we made two different uh, controllers. Uh, one to kind of operate when the demand is very high for the heat and then the other to take over um, when the demand of the electricity uh, becomes uh, like uh, a greater demand. And so, yeah, no one's just saying. And so in this first scenario we had only the electric storage um, available and we realized pretty quick that heating is the limiting factor. What we mean by that is um, in order for you to always have enough heat you always had a abundance um, of electricity being made. Um, and so as we, uh, as we were tuning um, our parameters, we started with some uh, ITAE and IMC correlations, and then we changed those parameters as we saw to try to minimize that o the heating oversupply um, as best that we could while still being able to use um, our electric storage uh, that we had. Um, and as we can see, I mean, you, you, there's a lot of waste heat being produced during that time in the middle of like that morning during that initial switch point because um, the demand starts out very high the nuclear reactor is producing a lot and then uh, and then we see it kind of tail off um, as the day kind of progresses and then pick back up again um, at the night at the very tail end there um, so these these two graphs these figures over here represent like a 24-hour scale and uh, the electric storage just shows how much the battery is actually uh, being used um, in order well, that, so that we can still meet like the heating supply. And we were able to use it. Uh, it's you know it's it's really not the most uh, efficient. You know like we're we're maxing out our battery capacity for like almost five hours down here, and we decided that there would be a, there's probably a better way in which we could try to store more energy um, so that we could more efficiently uh, meet the demands and not waste as much electricity. Okay, the second scenario that we painted was by adding heat storage. You saw that in the previous uh, diagram, it was the top red box. Um, <coughs> since our transfer function did not change, our PID controller parameters stayed the same. And um, I did realize that um, by changing the set point, um, we could either increase or decrease accumulation. So we set it for a different time period. We set it for like a week to see how the controller would work um, over a longer period of time rather than just 24 hours. And so we realized that a high set point 
uh, equals increased storage accumulation. So you'd have a, an upward trend um, to basically making your battery inefficient. Um, and then a low set point would uh, mean that you'd have a decrease in storage accumulation and eventually over a, 20, or a week's period you would run out of electricity or heating. Um, so by carefully selecting a set point we were able to um, get the most out of our, our systems and storage devices. <coughs> um, and uh, by using heat storage, we were able to maximize um, the use of wind power and electricity storage. Um, so we knew that if we had storage in our, um, if we had heat or electricity storage in our storage devices, that we wouldn't be running out of anything. So that was our, our, our key component that we were looking at. Um, and you see that we still we still didn't quite make it with the electric storage, but we were able to uh, get more use out of our, our battery. It has a lower minimum and about the same maximum. Um, and so we were able to uh, reduce the nuclear power load by about 10%. Okay, so we concluded that uh, while we were successfully able to meet both of the demands, that uh, they were the systems were somewhat inefficient, and that they, they wasted quite a bit of energy, especially in the first scenario. With our uh, um, with our heat, heating storage, we were able to decrease, as Coulter said, by about 10 percent. But most of the inefficiency is due to the large time delay um, and the controller's ability to to see. And when it finally sees, it takes a long time. Um, when we change the set point. Uh, it allows the system to be at a higher capacity and give it more time to re react uh, uh, to which it uh, to those disturbances that are coming because it it, it can't see that in the future. So, uh, um, for for recommendations, we uh, we uh, the system that we have uh, is is pretty much as good as uh, it's going to get for those things that we were able to change and those things that. Uh, we need to keep constant in order to meet the demands, but uh, we could make this better by adding either feed forward control or moderate predictive control. The feed forward control would be for disturbances and things like that and be able to uh, take out those disturbances and, and keep the, the daily trends smooth and things like that. The model predictive control would be able to gather data and, uh, and therefore be able to change the reactor before those, those increases in heat and electric demand. Um, we also did a little bit of research behind the, uh, the storage systems and uh, in the original problem we were given a 200 megawatt hour vanadium battery which was, which was sort of a guess but we saw that uh, actually the largest vanadium battery in production is about 86 megawatt hours but that uh, reservoir engineers or reservoir storage devices can go up to 200 and uh, they have about the same efficiency 70 to 85 percent that we had in our original problem. So our original model is uh, accurate in that sense and the, the, those storage systems would be able to be used. But also if we did, and uh, if we did use feed forward or model predictive control and they were effective, we would likely be able to take out one of the storage units which would also decrease cost and, and do things like that. So okay. that's cool. Thank you for the question. Okay, so uh, just a quick, uh, question for you. you. You had some different scenarios here. Uh, scenario 1, 2, and 3. Scenario 1 was without the uh, energy, s the heating energy storage, is that right? And uh -huh. then 2 was, was, with, was with the uh, the heating energy storage. And then 3, what was the scenario for the third one? Uh, I think we pretty much painted two scenarios right there. But we, um, we talked about an additional third with feed forward and model, but we oh, didn't okay. actually yeah. test okay. that. Okay. Sounds good. So, so um, one of the ways that you guys decrease the load then was just set your set point instead of at one, the 1.3 one um, for yeah. the heat instead mm -hmm. of the 10 or whatever. Yeah. Because okay. yeah, if, we, if we had it for 10, um, as I was mentioning before, we'd have an upward trend in our uh, But 1.3, it allows you to build up a little bit, but not too much so that you're yeah. wasting yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. If we took steady. out the saturation okay. limits, <laughs> yeah. the, okay. the oscillations, we increase or decrease, so we tried to get one that would remain steady. Okay, great. 
Uh, so did you try it over a week then? I know you. Yeah, we did. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just didn't see any plots. In it. Okay. Um, no, this is the yeah, okay. last one here. Yeah. That's how we did all of our testing, but it's easier to see in the daily graphs what was happening. Great. Okay. Because they all look because of the all the demands, they all look like they're out of whack. 